but I try to make something every day. A beat or just a melody on a song, I'm always going. To me, it's always just been just a process of getting better at making music. I'm a person that would be doing this shit regardless. Like, I would still be in the studio making music. That's just what I do. Steve Lacey came to fame at the early age of 17 after being a key contributor on the internet's Grammy-nominated album, Ego Death, already establishing his unique style and talent. Something bad is bad to happen to me. Taking that sound and feeling with him, Lacey has continued the trajectory of a music career on Fast Forward. And although some have been quick to paint him within the bounds of his social media viral success, in my mind, what we're seeing here are the very early stages of a really special, unique songwriting production talent. In this video, I'm gonna to pull together some practical advice that aspiring musicians and creatives can take from Steve's career so far. And to start, I wanna analyze his come up in the industry, looking at Lacey's do-it-yourself approach, the principle of getting quick reps as a creative, and how we can look to understand the power of limitation on developing our own unique voice. The reason why I wanted the MacBook was because all of my friends and everyone else doing the artsy stuff had, had the MacBooks, you know. That's, that was the best possible thing, so. I got my hands on an iPhone. No, it was an iPod, fifth generation touch. And I realized that I didn't like necessarily need what I thought I did. One of the things that any artist has to build in order to find success is a unique and differentiated voice. And in this piece, we see how it was Steve's limitation that allowed him to do this at such an early age. The flexible toolkit in his pocket gave him the ability to get the quick reps that any creative needs in order to move smoothly through those moments of failure and learning. I wanted to make the best possible project that I can with this little thing. Like I recorded everything, like I plugged the guitar in, I layered vocals, mad vocals, <laughs> just on this phone. It was, uh, it's a beautiful experience. Whether we're a photographer, painter, or guitarist, the consumer culture can often make us think that we have to get a certain level of tools in place in order to make a start on that big project. What Lacey demonstrates to us is the value of getting started now and the truth that, just like Jay-Z's rapping style, developing from having to memorize his lyrics when he was away from the notepad, it's often our limitations as an artist that are gonna allow us to develop our unique creative voice. The only way to learn these things and get better at these things is by doing it over and over and over. If all it took to be good was to have the right equipment, the people who had the most money would always win. Just like some trendsetter who uses thrift shopping to look better than anyone else in the major brands, so it's by harnessing those creative limitations that are actually going to allow us to build those problem solving techniques and find that creative voice. I was thrift shopping. As I realized, scruffling through the shirts, I'm like, this kind of looks like how my music sounds. Because <laughs> if you listen to a couple of songs, it might sound like there's a lot going on. All goes together to be one, like, kind of pattern, you know? Thank you guys for all the love. I'm going to play you a song now. As mentioned in the intro, Steve can attract a fair bit of side-eyeing for the breaks that he looks to have received in the music industry, such as meeting the internet and the viral success of Bad Habit. The media loves a story like this because it's simple and enticing, satisfying both our craving for those lottery-style fast success stories, whilst also comforting that defeatist inner voice that most of us have ready to provide those excuses why somebody else has achieved something and we weren't able to. Once we're able to take a step back and look at these stories through a more positive and measured viewpoint, however, what we're often able to extract are some empowering and practical truths that sit behind this simple narrative of the lucky break. 
Did you just expect the success of this song when you recorded it? No. <laughs> no. To me, I mean, I never think about that when I'm making music. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've been making music for years, and I think to me it's always just been just a process of getting better at making music. Music, music, music. music. All of my friends are going to Norbon, so like I'm like hot, like no, I don't want to. I'm going all the way here. I go there, started playing bass in the band with like Jamil. He let me like try a beat one day. He's like, yeah, just you know, mess with it, you know, see what I'm saying, see what you can do. I made like a like a weak beat, like I didn't know what I was doing. It was garbage. I guess he knew that like I could like make stuff. Um, he started inviting me to the studio that Sid and Matt had in Hollywood. That's when like it just like clicks. Steve. So with that deeper look at how Lacey came through, we can see how it's by focusing on our craft, having the willingness to sacrifice to move towards that passion, and also building a learned ability to put ourselves in spaces where we might feel uncomfortable and face failure that are actually all going to allow us to have the best chance of finding success with whatever it is we're doing. I was obsessed. I just like was so obsessed with it, like the way it looked and just seeing people play it. Like, I would go in Guitar Center and just like look around and just like be like, whoa. If we're going to take a list of things away from this video, I'd want to add to that an awareness of the defeatist stories that can easily form around our limitations and trying to reframe and move through these stories using daily work and problem solving to build momentum and looking at these limitations as an opportunity that are actually gonna separate us from other people and allow us to build that unique creative voice that's so key. I just felt it was a relatable story and that it just felt good to me. Right. That's it. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's kind of the message of that whole song. It's Community Request Month for Creative Minds, and I'm really trying to get videos made on the artists that people have requested I cover. If you have any ideas yourself, please do feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll get them on the list for future videos. And with that said, thanks as always to those watching. Power to whatever creative work you're doing in your own practice. And peace until next time.